In this short video, we're going to extend our Next.js contact form from the last video and integrate reCAPTCHA, which is a tool from Google that allows you to challenge or detect spammy responses on contact forms, which I don't know about you, but my contact form gets a lot of spam and it's very annoying. We're going to use a component contributed by Zalman Liu, one of our own community members here at Pipedream, who generously spent his time to create this awesome component. That way we can automate the filtering of a contact form request to our workflow. So from the last episode, you can see we have this workflow already set up with a URL. I've changed the code slightly in our Next.js app to re rely on environment variables instead. So here you can see I have an env.local file and I've placed our Pipedream URL in here. I've also gone ahead and added a reCAPTCHA site key, which is the public API key to integrate with reCAPTCHA. How you find this is by going into the reCAPTCHA dashboard and you can click on the v3 admin console, which is surprisingly hard to find. And then you can go in here and create a new site. So you can see the keys under the reCAPTCHA keys area. And here we can copy the site key. The site key is the public key. The secret key is, you guessed it, the secret API key. We'll use both of these in this example, but first we'll start with the front end key, AKA the site key, and we'll bring it into the env.local in our Next.js site. Now, for those who don't know, the reason why these variables have the name next underscore public underscore name is because we want to make sure that this variable is exposed to the browser or the front end side. This is a nice little security feature by Next.js making sure that you don't accidentally leak server-side environment variables to your front-end application, letting anybody see them and use them, which is no good. So the site key is designed to be public and it's safe to put it into this variable. So now that we have these variables set up, we can go ahead and run yarn dev, which will bring up our Next.js server on port 3000. So now that we've gone ahead and started up our dev development environment, let's take a look at the contact form code and just get a high level overview of what's changed since the last video. Now, if you remember from the last video, we use this library called React Hook Form and we used it to update the state of the form as people type in their email address and then ship that data up to Pipedream when they hit submit using this on submit handler you see on this line. What I've done here is I've included the reCAPTCHA library from Google uh, it's a front-end library, and it will watch your site for fraudulent activity, like the time it takes for someone to fill out this form, or bot, which would be very quick, and the user agent, IP address, all kinds of other things that are a bit of a black, a black box. You don't need to worry about that. You just need to include this library, and then make sure you wrap your API call, whatever it may be. In this case, it's an Axios API call to our workflow, and include this token, this unique token that's generated by the capture library based off of its calculations on the front end. And we'll include this token in our payload under the post request. So the first argument to a post request is the URL, which we defined in our env local file. And then the next argument is the data. And then we're appending this token in that data. So let's do a live demo. This is our actual Next.js app interface. I'm going to send a submission. We have a thanks for signing up response. If I head over to my contact form, I see there's a brand new post request that has come in and there is the email and the token. Awesome. So now we can play with the server side. I'm going to edit this workflow and I'm going to add a new step between the trigger and sending an email to myself. I want to block requests that reCAPTCHA thinks are spammy. So we can do that by selecting the latest event that was just posted, which should include that token. So now we're using the latest event and there's the token. We can add Zalman's awesome reCAPTCHA component. So we look for reCAPTCHA, there's Google reCAPTCHA right here. And then we can use this custom component he made called validate reCAPTCHA response. Now, what I didn't mention up front is you can use V2 or V3 of reCAPTCHA. 
at a high level, the V2 is the more familiar. You have to actually click a button and then verify that there's X number of stop signs in this grid of pictures. In V3, they've changed it up a little bit. Instead, it's all backend focused. You get a score, a fraud score from zero to one, one being the most likely to be a person and zero being most likely to be a bot. So we will take a look and we will use V3 for this case. And I'm gonna connect my CAPTCHA account. And the secret is the secret from reCAPTCHA. So I'm gonna copy my secret key from the Google reCAPTCHA admin console. And then I'm going to paste it here. And I'm gonna give it a nickname, Pierce reCAPTCHA. Perfect, CAPTCHA, it's hard to spell. We'll save that. And now we can use the token field, token prop programmed by Zalman to inject our token from the front end. And now we can actually include the remote IP address as well because this is coming directly from the, the Next.js powered site. So the IP address will be the user's end IP address, making our signal that much more accurate. So let's go ahead and test this action out. So yes, in this case, we're going to get an error because this is a duplicate request Recaptcha's already seen this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, deploy this change and then do it again. So I'm gonna refresh the page and then I'm going to submit again. We'll go back to our workflow and this brand new Recaptcha token has been used to generate a score. Perfect, so the score is point. I guess I am pretty close to human. I'm not quite human, I'm not one, but I'm point one away from being human in Google's eyes, which is a compliment, I think. So we're going to add a filter here. So here's where we can exit the workflow early if we think that you know this is pretty spammy. So we could say end workflow on condition, and we'll say uh, a number, because this is a number, and the condition is if this number is less than whatever we want to say is less than or equal to 0 0.05 maybe, just as a test. Uh, the number value to evaluate is actually the score, right? And we're gonna compare it against 0 0.5, just a standard value, and we'll say the, if the reason is met, then reCAPTCHA score, reCAPTCHA score meets met, cool. So then we'll deploy this one more time. Yeah, the input cannot be converted to a number. Maybe we, maybe I can just select the latest event. Oh, of course I can. I should have done this from the beginning. But we will get an error because reCAPTCHA's already seen this token before. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy it. And we'll just, we'll test this in production. This is in a real app anyway. Press submit. There we go. It's doing the third time's a charm, right? So we're just gonna see how this reCAPTCHA thinks this is real, point, score of 0 0.09, reCAPTCHA score has been met, and then it sent an email to myself because apparently I'm a real person. Now what's cool about this flow is that we didn't introduce any kind of friction to submitting the form, like in Cap reCAPTCHA v2 where people have to pick out the number of lions they see in a picture and it's impossible to tell and there's crosswalks and all kinds of funny pictures to go through. There's zero friction to submit the form. Instead on the back end, we rely on Google's fraud detection algorithm to instead filter out results and make them a little bit less loud, a little bit less spammy to our own inboxes or whatever notification system you're using. Hope this was useful. Catch you on the next one.